history is indeed a beautiful thing, so also are the Kanuri people of Nigeria, a renowned ethnic group, a people with regal consciousness. But how can that be otherwise when their ancestors were said to have been kings and queens? Don't worry, you'll find out more in the course of the program. Welcome, it's Bon Appetit, a culinary adventure with I, Sarah Tukseikichiri. Today, we're showcasing a cuisine from Borno State, where currently the majority of the Kanuri, which is the dominant ethnic group, resides in northeastern Nigeria. But before then, take a look at this video. The Kanuri are a cluster of peoples speaking related nilo saharan dialects which are absorbed by the Bono Empire and merged into a complex heterogeneous society. Kanuri lives in Bono and Yobe states in northeastern Nigeria, Bifa and Zinda provinces in the Southeast Republic of Niger, La Prefecture and Southern Kanem Prefecture in Western Chad and Northern Cameroon. Inheriting the religious and cultural traditions of the Kanem Bono state, Kanuri peoples are predominantly Sunni Muslims. To a Kanuri, the most valuable asset economically, politically and socially is not dollars or bullocks or money stuff of any kind. Rather, it is valuable and profitable social relations. And this means primarily bosom relations. The Kanuri wedding is one event that is colorful and exciting. It is an occasion that brings the people's culture to life through music, dance, and other colorful cultural activities. Marriage being the sacred union between a man and a woman, this for the Kanuris is done at an early age. Indeed, the simplicity and unique lifestyle of the Kanuri people is a sophisticated one. It shows the world how advanced they are inwardly. Give admiration to a Kanuri however life presents him or her to you, for in truth, they are sons and daughters of royalty. Take a look at my featuring food enthusiasts profile. So for this two course meal, we are going to be making kuningeta. That is pap infused with brown nut. Mm. Really, really tasty. Mm -hmm. and, then we are really, it's <laughs> and then we are really going to go really traditional. And then this, uh, for this uh, main course, we are actually going to be making brambisco and mianyakua. Once it's brambisco in Borno, they always take it mianyakua. So we are trying to keep things traditional mm -hmm. as possible. Yeah, of course. That's so, awesome. So are you ready, Chef Kanija? Perfect. So we can start cooking. Can. Let me grab me an apron. All right. <laughs> so here I have uh, for my kunu, I have my pap concentrate, mm -hmm. and then I also have my granite. I've actually toasted the granite, removed the chaff, and then uh, grinded it in a meal, dry meal, of course. And I'm going to sieve it right now. Okay. You poured in a bit of water in that, right? Yes, there's a bit of water in that. Mm. We are going to see it because of um, we actually want uh, our pap to be smooth. We don't want anything to be gritty. Mm. So I'm just going to pour this in here. So you can go ahead and um, add a little bit more water if you have to. Okay. 
so I'm going to just sit that. I think the amount of water that goes in uh, there, I mean, depends on the amount of uh, drum or paste you have. Of course, yeah. of course, yes. So once this is done, I'm going to actually put water on the fire. Oh, water? Just water? Yes, for um, the pack. Okay. One thing I love with pap is that it's like the opening meal. I mean, you have it for breakfast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not only that, I think this is done. I know of adults that love to take pap at any time of the day. Of course, and that's why I think it's one of the most favorite dish for Ramadan. Mm. We actually make a kunu as the starting meal, and that's why I'm making it my starter. Okay. I want well, you to not, enjoy not it only so. for Ramadan, to yeah. start off your day. Day, yes, mm -hmm. start off your day. It gives you energy for you, your kids. It's just perfect. So I think I have enough water here. All right. Not to forget, I have my granite here. I'm going to put it after it comes to a boil because of it froths. So mm -hmm. I'm going to allow it to wait for a bit before okay. adding it into the pot. Okay. okay. My water is boiling. It's come to a boil already. Okay. I'm going to add. Put the granite concentrate into it. Okay. Right. And I think from now on, we have to be careful. This one will start floating up. Mm. I'm going to bring my whisk close. And keep the pot slightly open. So I'm going to make this into a smooth piece, my pop concentrate. Just going to Gently. It's hot. <laughs> Very hot. It's coming to a boil nicely. So we still wait. It's perfect now. Oh, okay. I'm going to put it on low heat. I think I'm good with this consistency. Mm. So I'm going to turn up with it. Oh, completely? Yeah. And it's ready? It's ready. So our starter is ready. Our starter is ready. Mm. Well done, Kaji. So what's next? Oh, of course, we are going to go into the soup. Okay, we're going to go into the first. Yes, we are going to go into making me a yako. Before then, let's clean up a bit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> For the new and yakua, you have to use the uh, sorrel leaves. That's which is, That is yakua. Yeah, yes. And then there will be some ale yoku. And uh, I've already chopped some here so that it makes it easy mm -hmm. and proper. You also need um, crayfish, um, granite, and then this is um, um, gravy. Some, some onions and pepper. I just um, grinded it. Mm -hmm. And oil, of course. And then our proteins, this is our meat and our dry fish. Mm. Then uh, for the um, soup concentrate, I have here my tomatoes, my garlic, my shombo, my um, and my tatase, tarbu and onions. Of scotch bonnet. Scotch bonnet. Mm. And uh, that's basically it. So right now what I will do is um, every soup needs a good stock. So I'm mm. going to make a stock water from uh, our meat. Okay. And using this and seasoning, of course. Okay. Let's see you do it. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to actually put in my meat. This has been washed, rinsed, of course. I'm not going to put the fish actually right now. I'm going to leave it. So this is uh, the grated pepper and onion mix. Mm. So when you want to make your stock, you put a bit of pepper. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Which is, uh, they call the jaggi. Oh yeah, yeah. that's right. <laughs> <laughs> In the north. Yes, we call it jaggi. Mm -hmm. And of course season. When you talk about seasoning now, it's a matter of choice. It's a matter of yeah. choice, of course. And then a bit of salt. Don't overdo it. Most seasoning have salt. Yeah. 
So we are going to allow this to come to a boil. So really simple, but it's going to come up together really beautifully. Okay, let's see that happen. <laughs> well done. So I'm going to get started on the base of the soup. So for my this thing, of course, we've talked about using tomatoes, onions, shambo, scotch bonnet peppers, and three cloves of garlic. Um, a lot of people can choose to blend because it's easier. So I'm going to use a manual blender for my soup base. Some people might choose to use blender because it's easier. Mm -hmm. I'm making the choice to actually use a manual blender because I like a little bit of texture in my soup. As you can see, this is already grinded and it's ready. So I'm going to check on my meat stock. I think it's perfect right now. So I'm just going to turn the fire off so that we can start on the soup. I've lowered the heat. So we have our stock ready. Mm -hmm. All infused with the juicy flavor of the meat. Yes. So for my soup base, I'm going to add palm oil. And we are going to allow the oil to heat up. So this is the tomato, onion, pepper, uh, that I grinded. So it's hot enough, I think. I'm going to pour it in. So we are going to allow this to reduce. Once it's reduced, we'll fry a bit to really get the flavors. Mm, this is nicely fried. <laughs> and then our dry fish goes in the same way. Now direction. I have to remove this. Mm -hmm. okay. We're just going to allow the fish to slowly infuse okay. the flavor in. This is the perfect time when you are frying to so infuse flavors into your dish. Mm. So I'm going to mix up the meat stock and granite paste. So you just keep on adding until you until we get the consistency and the quantity you want actually. So I'm going to add this. Enough here, so I'm going to put this into slowly. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. So I'm just going to toast this. Kadi, you've not spiced it. Yes, actually, no the seasoning. Stuff, the, the, the stuff actually has seasoning. Okay, that's right. Yeah, so I don't want to over season it. So I'm going to, after I put in the stock, I'm going to taste it. If we need anything more, we'll correct it. We'll correct it okay. then. So right now, I'm going to take in the stock and try it. Should I remove this? this? Yes, for this one. Some big chunks here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really big chunks. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, as you can see, the color is already looking inviting. Mm -hmm. But then, nobody can deny the color green. How much it pops. Yeah, that's in right. The, in the soup. So I love the consistency. Mm -hmm. Of course, with the leaf, of course, it's going to water down a bit. Mm -hmm. Since leaves contain. Some more water. water. Yeah, that's For the sorrel leaves, uh, which is known as yakua, they are actually rich in vitamin C and a lot of antioxidants. Traditionally, people actually use uh, potash mm. to squeeze it out. And uh, as much as I like um, adhering to traditions, 
Mm. Uh, this one of the tradition I'm not going to do because Since of that's the... That's your help. Yes, you are squeezing out the, the nutrients. That's right. Yes. So, mm. so our, we added some seasoning and a little bit of salt. And then on to the star of the soup, the yakua. Hey, the sorrel leaves. Sorrel leaves. AKA yakua. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Full of phytonutrients, antioxidants, and um, all our grandmothers love this. Mm. So if you are looking for something to make for your parents, for your older family. To please they, them. Yes. Especially they, in northern Nigeria. Yes, they actually love those traditional dishes. They get bored with our jollof rice and fried rice. No offense to jollof rice and fried rice, but yeah, it's get boring actually. I agree. <laughs> I agree. And funny enough, my own taste buds are yes. more inclined to these kinds of, of dishes. Of course, we are losing them and we need to bring them back. Exactly. So we are going to be adding the, finally, the Aleyoku, which is um, amaranthus. It's actually not called spinach. A lot of people call it spinach, but spinach is a different vegetable mm. entirely. We are going to allow this to simmer down for just about two minutes. Okay. Once it's vegetables, you don't want it to stay long. Mm. Isn't this a beauty? It is. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. So the three minutes it's over. Whoa. And this looks really good. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to turn off the thing. This okay. is ready. Because vegetables shouldn't cook for too long. Yes. Well done. Making primary school is really easy, but mm. it can be technical. Oh. So you have to get your measurements right. So here I'm going to put in two cups of water. Um, this is about 250 ml. Okay. We have two in there already, that's yes. 500 ml. And then this is like two and a half. So 625 ml exactly. of water. So right now I'm going to use a, a little bit of salt. You didn't mention the ingredients. And of course, the ingredients I use uh, for our bravisco is maize grits. These have been washed, running water, and also oil. The, the oil actually helps it from not sticking. So I'm going to put about. About four tablespoons of oil. Okay. Let me just go on five. I'm going to transfer this into a bigger pot. Mm -hmm. Because our mince grid, as I suspect, is going to double in size. Mm -hmm. So we actually have to allow this to boil. Oh, it's um, boiling. Okay, it's perfect. So we are going to mix it in there. I'm going to get a whisk for this. Hmm. This is an innovation. <laughs> um, and we are going to make sure that our burner, burner is on really low flame. Women are really creative. <laughs> this sure. is corn for God's sake. Yes. Maize, corn. Corn. I can imagine the first woman that tried this. <laughs> <laughs> and right now, it's now a staple for of generations course. to come. Especially for the Kanuri people. For the Kanuri people. Mm -hmm. And many other languages yes. around them of have course. already borrowed this. A lot of respect to their culture. Really, really rich. Mm. And their dishes are no exception. Wow. So I'm just going to give this a stain. I'm not going to cover the pot. I'm just going to stir. Okay. So you continue stirring till it cooks? Yes. Wow. It doesn't take long. So we turn off the flame at this point. Completely? Yes. So we are going to allow this to cool for like about 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And then we are just going to gently fluff it up. I'm just going to use a fork 
to like to separate it a bit. That's the way you make your couscous. But this is more wholesome. I think we are done. Cost meal, couldn't get that, and brabisco, and me and your poor. So it's a traditional Borono meal. Exactly. Okay. And I'm going to start with the starter, which is a uh, couldn't get that. Mm. I'm going to serve you that. Tasting it now, I can even perceive it. That's you know? And you know, sometimes the aroma of what you you're about to eat, of course, encourages yes, encourages you to. It's really nice. So I'm going to leave you to enjoy that. Hope you know our brabisco and me and your boy is still with. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately, I'm done with this. We we'll start oh, the other business. Yeah. Thank you very much, Kadi. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. So right now, I'll start serving the main course, which is our bravisco and me and Yako. That's yours. <laughs> the no. protein is too much. Okay, let me. This one. Mm. Yeah, you Thank you. Who have been gida gida yabesh? Meaning, once you leave your roots, your roots also forgets about you. Sure. Everything all encompasses your dress mode, your mannerism. And even your taste bud tends to forget <laughs> what you're missing. Of <laughs> mm. Thank you very much, Katie. I really enjoyed this uh, meal. I'm Honestly. Happy. And I ate it with so much euphoria. It brought back so many memories. Yes, thank Honestly. You. Thank you very much. That's what I hope to achieve. <laughs> and you did you. achieve it. I'm thank better. you. Thank you so much. I enjoyed it and you all should please try it out in your kitchens. You won't be disappointed in yourself. The Kanuri have had a strong influence on surrounding people, which include the Budum of Lake Chad, the Mandara and Kotoko who live southeast of the Kanuri territory, the Margit of the Damboa district, the Babur in the hill south of the Kanuris. The Bolewa located southwest also of the Kanuri and the Bede of Geshwa, all within the Kanuri territory. All of these groups have acquired various aspects of Kanuri culture, mainly their language, their food, and of course, Islam. Thank you very much for watch watching this episode of Bon Appetit, a culinary adventure. Sending your messages 
your comments and your observations on our social media handles right now showing on your television screens. Next week, God willing, I'll be back with another interesting episode of Bon Appetit, a culinary adventure. Stay safe and take care of yourselves. Bye now.